All right guys, so today I thought I would do a little bit of a different video. I'm gonna show you guys how to work with 360 footage, at least for me that comes from an Insta360 One or One X. The footage that we'll be working with today is from a One X. And I wanted to show the workflow for you guys if you are starting with that footage and ending up inside Final Cut. So depending on if you want to integrate that footage in with your other standard footage, or if you actually want to make an actual 360 video. So a video that you can put up on YouTube that anybody with a compatible device like a smartphone or an Xbox or things like that will be able to actually spin around in your footage and see it. So we'll, we'll talk about both of those. That's gonna come up right now. I'm gonna grab some 360 footage and we'll start. All right, guys, so I got a little SD card here, a little mini SD. That's what goes inside the Insta360 One X and the One. And I'm guessing this would probably work the same with the new Insta360 One R, but I don't have that camera, so I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to put this in my card reader. You guys will be able to see this pop up here on the screen, hopefully. Okay, and it goes, and we wait. And you'll see this untitled come up here on the screen. And inside that, there's going to be your insta 360 footage now you will notice anything that has an insp at the end is a photo and anything that has an insv is a video you'll also notice that every number like this one here so 005 there's two so that's basically the recording from the front camera and recording from the rear camera so what we're going to do is we're going to come here and we're going to type in insta 360 studio and again depending on the camera you have if you have an insta 361 there is an Insta360 Studio, and if you have a One X, then you have this Studio 2019, which does this camera. And again, I'm not sure if this one will do the R or not, but we'll just crack that open. So here we have it, nice and simple. And all you need to do here is if you're taking one file, for instance, and let's start with this. We'll find one that's not that big. So uh, we'll do this one number two, because it's 149 megs. So if I take this and just kind of drag this to the screen here, I don't have to grab both of them. You just let it go. And you'll actually see that it, it knows to grab both. So it'll actually get both of those. So I can come in here and spin around. So you don't have to grab both of the files to pull them in. There they are right there. Now, if I want to from here, really for me, the only thing I'm gonna do is make sure that this use flow state stabilization is turned on. If you do have a case, like I have a venture case, so if I was doing anything that I had that on, I would make sure that was checked to go through it. You can check here for true audio if this is a video that you want to make sure that your voice is kind of amplified, you can turn that on. Usually I recommend just trying it on and off because with a lot of noise reduction, sometimes the sound gets a little yeah iffy. Try it, try it with, try it without, see what you like, right? And then at this point in time, we would just hit this little kind of up arrow here. So you'll see it in the top right there. And it's going to ask us what resolution. I usually say keep it where it is. You can crank this right up to like 200. But again, I'm going to keep it at default. So I think it was at 120, somewhere in that range. Format H.264. You can do H.265. And it may actually make a smaller and more manageable file, but it is nuts for how long it takes to do it. So just be aware if you're gonna do that, it can take a lot of time. So I don't. Uh, last one here, you'll see, you only have video. Remove grain if you've noticed that that file was a little on the noisy side because of the fact that you shot in low light because the Insta360 cameras aren't great in low light. Last but not least, where are you gonna put it? For me right now, I'm gonna just throw this on the desktop, which is awesome. Now, I'm gonna cancel this, just so you can see. Normally we would just hit okay. I'm gonna cancel this here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab another file. So let's say we grabbed number nine. That's a big one. Let's grab number eight. We're gonna drag that in here as well. And you'll see that load up, so that's a good one. Okay, so now I have two and eight over here. Now, if you want, you can actually highlight both of these two clips. So on a Mac, I just use my command to do both of them. And if you right click on those, you'll see batch export. So this is normally what I do because of course I'm bringing in a bunch of clips and I want them all to be able to go out. So I'm gonna just say export all of these. I'm gonna go to bed or I'm gonna go do something else. Again, really the only thing that's kind of important is I'm gonna make sure that the flow state stabilization is on. And 
Again, if your footage was grainy, you may want to do that remove, but I'm not. Desktop, hit OK. And what happens is you'll actually see that it starts to process. Now these are small files in comparison to what a big 360 footage could be. And you'll see that they take a little bit of time. So depending on the speed of your machine, this may be something that you do overnight if you're doing like 10 or 20 files or just have something else to do because you're gonna to wanna to give your computer a lot of time. Now we're gonna fast forward to when this is done. So I'll be right back. All right, so looks like my files are almost finished. The last one's coming in around 80% right now. So this should just take a couple seconds for it to finish, but I wanted you guys to see it complete here and done. So be aware, just so you know, there's no big hooray, it's finished. No, it's just, it's, they're both done. So cool. So we're gonna close out of Insta360 Studio right now. I'll open up Final Cut. And just remember where you place those files because we have to go get them. So I'm gonna make an event which we're gonna put these files into. So an event here, and we're gonna call it 360 footage. Awesome. We're gonna import some footage into that, and that's on my desktop. Nice thing is it's these two right here. Yep, I'm not even gonna make optimize, I'm gonna make this as fast as possible. You can, if you're gonna do some color correcting on it, I don't mind actually doing optimizing because it actually moves it into a different color space. Uh, but for you and I right now, we're not gonna worry about it. So I'm going to import these two. And while those are importing, we're going to go up to file and make a new project. And our first project, we're going to do this just as a 4K piece of footage. Hit OK here. We're going to call this standard. This is standard video. So nothing fancy here. You know, Apple ProRes, 4K, et cetera, et cetera. And this is great if you want to take this 360 footage and actually put it in with other footage that you've taken from your other cameras while you're away on holidays. So we're gonna take the first one here, just to kind of show you guys, and we're gonna drag it in. Now, as soon as we drag it in, you'll see that it conforms in here. It plays it just as if it was just standard footage. But the difference is down here, you see this right here, there's a little, like a cinema roll or film roll. This tells us that this is a 360 footage. So when we click on it, wherever your playhead is, I can be like, I'm gonna start it right on, on, on my wife Mary here. But we have a couple things over here, and the big one for me is actually going to be your field of view. So this is where you and I can zoom in and out, and you'll see you can come out all the way till you get what the lens is seeing. So I always come in just right there. So it's about 133%. I can move this around, get us framed, and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to hit a keyframe. So this is where it's going to start. So now I can have this play for, you know, two, three, four seconds. Cool. Come over here again, add a keyframe, right? Now move it a little forward and say, okay, let's let's actually see what Mary is looking at. So we're gonna kind of scroll it over to the window and it automatically drops a keyframe. And then we'll kind of play for the rest of it and keep it there. If we move it a little bit, even though just a tad bit, it'll drop an extra keyframe. So now we hit done. And if we come back and look at this, we'll actually see it go. You'll see it start it smooth. Nice and fluid. And you want to make sure that the spin isn't super fast if you want it to be nice and fluid. But there we go. So nice and simple. You do this with all your 360 clips. You kind of find where you want it to start. You keyframe it. You figure out where you want it to go, you move it, you keyframe it, and it just moves in and out. Make sure that you play around with the field of view because you can zoom in or punch in on areas and you can pull out of areas. So that's that's actually really nice. And this is now just a standard piece of footage, which, which looks great, right? And you can kind of embed it in with the rest of your stuff. Super nice. But let's say you and I decide, no, no, no we want a file that we can put up on YouTube that people can actually kind of get a tour so they can kind of walk around, you know, kind of move around. And I did a video just last Thursday, I think it was, that I did our trip to Mexico and I'll put a link up here for you guys if you want to go watch it so that you can actually spin around and it's just kind of a, a condensed version of our trip because I was playing with this. So simply inside Final Cut, we're going to go to a new project again and this time I'm going to say 360 trip. And in the video here, we actually switch it to 360. And that's a big bonus of Final Cut is it has 360 in it as one of the projects. So we switch that. We're gonna leave this the way it is. 
looks good. And you'll actually see projection type have monoscopic or stereoscopic. We're going to keep it in monoscopic, okay? Everything else looks good. We're going to hit OK. Starts it up. And now we come in here and same kind of idea. We can look at how long we want this. I'd be like, you know what? I only want this on here for like 10 seconds. So I'm going to just grab 10 seconds of that clip. Hit E to bring it into the timeline. I want this one here, okay? And same thing, I'm going to put this on for like 20 seconds because it's pretty. Bring it in here. Problem is you look at this and you look at the screen and you're like, well, that doesn't look great at all, right? That looks like it's all stretched. You get to see both cameras. And if that's how it's going to be seen, I don't want that. And be aware, if you upload this to YouTube, devices that don't or don't have the ability to view 360 content, and I'll give you an example, Apple TVs. An Apple TV, when you bring up 360 footage, we'll see it like this. It doesn't understand what 360 footage is. So just be aware of that. Um, Xbox Ones can read it. I think PlayStations can read it. Chrome can read it. Most smartphones can read it, things like that. But we have this here. So if you wanna see what it's gonna look like. So basically, if you come up to view up here and you go to view and you say show in viewer and you actually say 360 degree, you actually see in the viewer you have that this is what it's this is what it's going to look like so people can kind of take this and spin this around and you'll be able to look around and see all that and if we were playing this you can see i can be like oh i wonder what that looks like right spin that around and my wife and i i'm like yeah that looks good because you may want to just check to make sure that part of the clip that you picked is useful all right nothing gets in the clip that you didn't want it to that's kind of handy right so you've done all your editing and it looks great now be aware if you want to upload this in 360 like i'm doing it right now you can't mix and match footage it has to be all 360 or it's not 360 so every clip in here has to be 360 footage and you can't put non 360 with standard video that just doesn't like each other okay so you can't you can't do it it's all 360. so we got this simply here's simple you go up to the share button in here and you literally will see this when you go to say YouTube for instance settings right nothing in here kind of shows except for projection type it says I can't even pronounce it equi rectangular <clears throat> cool what matters is this is going to process in 360 now be aware when it first goes up there and it finishes and it says done and you go watch it before you you give it enough time it'll look wrong you have to let it finish its processing you have to let it do all of its resolutions so once it's uploaded again probably give it like a good hour before it's available to see in 360 but it works it, it final cut knows all the metadata that it needs to send up to youtube so that it realizes that this is a 360 file that it's 360 footage all right, guys i'm gonna leave you guys there this was a walkthrough of the process of using your 360 footage at least again off an insta 360 i'm sure if you are using a different camera that has a different piece of software once you just get it exported so that it can be injected into final cut the process will be the same that's it for today's video hopefully you guys make some cool 360 shots because i'm going to start making more we're, we're going on another holiday right away and because i've learned how to do this i think i'm going to take some more 360 footage i think it should be fun all right guys like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'm going to leave a link down below to the Insta360 cameras that I use. If you guys want to go pick one up, that's kind of cool. Help support the channel because that's awesome. And uh, that's it. See you in the next video.